To start making our textures, we're going to use a cube in Mudbox. And this will be a good way to test out some textures. Now we're going to select the front view and we're going to make sure that our levels are at their highest for this box. So I'm going to make sure in the Layers tab here, I'm going to create a new paint layer. Selecting Diffuse for the channel, making sure the save as is TIFF 8-bit RGBA, the size is 4000, and we'll change the name just to Color, just so we know what the layer is. So making sure we select the projection in the Paint Tools tab, we're going to paint a brick wall using the tools here. We're going to move the stencil and align it to the box with the white stripes at the top and bottom lining up with the box. So these are the settings for the stencil because we've selected it. So we want to make sure we go back to projection. So we select projection and from here we can change the strength and the size of the brush. Now with this size and strength it's not working very well. So what we want to do here is change the strength to full, which is 100, and we're going to enlarge the size, just so we can paint the texture on there quite quickly. Now we're going to create a new layer, and this will be the bump map layer. So we're going to call this bump, and change the channel to bump map, and select OK. Now with projection still selected, we're going to change the strength of the brush to 3. And the size of the brush we want it to be the same size as the bricks themselves. And we're only going to paint over the bricks to begin with, just lightly. making sure not to go over the white stripes or the cement between the bricks. As we will paint them next with different brush settings. Now with this, uh, we're going to change the size of the brush to be about the same size as the white stripes or the cement part of the brick wall. And we're going to increase the strength to 6. So now as we paint over these white parts once or twice, um, what this does is create a more indentation in the bump mapping. So it's going to look like that the red bricks are sticking out further than the white cement in between. So making sure that we are getting the edge of the of the red bricks just slightly. Now that we've got this completed, we're going to create a new layer, and this will be the specular, specular layer. And this will just make certain parts of the textures uh, more shiny. So we'll call this spec, and with this selected we'll make sure we have projection on, and we're going to change 
the size and the strength. Uh, just the size maybe. And we're going to go over the brick areas and we can see now it's starting to highlight a bit more. And this is a good way to highlight particular parts of your texturing or your model. So there might be more shiny highlighted parts that you might want to uh, show off more on your model. So we're just going to go over the red brick. We don't want the strokes to be too even, so we don't want it to be a little bit off. Now I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to have a look at our model. It's always important to rotate the model around after you've done these type of textures. And you can see how the bump mapping and the specular is working. And it's turning out pretty well. So now we're going to try and do some skin texturing. And this time we'll use the paintbrush. Making sure we have diffuse selected. And we're going to change the color of the brush to a skin tone. making sure the strength of the brush is up and now we've gone to the back view to do this uh, we've made sure we've got this all colored in making sure we have um, brush selected now just important to note just before I did switch from side view to the back view uh, sorry the right view to the back view I did cut that out and it's a bit quick so it's important to paint on the back of the model, the opposite side of the brick wall. Okay, so now we've gone to stencil. I'm going to find a nice skin texture. And this one will be the one we'll use. Now using the uh, tools here we can rotate and scale and move this stencil so using this, the keyboard shortcuts with the mouse we're going to have that just cover the full uh, side of the cube so now we're going to make sure we go down to bump map and switch it to that making sure we still have paintbrush selected and make sure we change the color back to white And here we're going to play around with some of the settings. So the strength is still at 100, and you can see how not good that looks. It builds up way too much. So we're going to put the strength all right down. And I'm going to make that two. And since it's just a small brush, there are areas you can see are starting to build. So we're going to control Z, and we'll attempt to do some inverted. Now the point of showing this is just to so show in some cases you can put the strength um, in negative. Not, it doesn't always work. That's something you can try out. So we'll go back into a positive number. And we can see there's some areas that build up a little bit too much. So we're going to control Z and increase the size of the brush and see if that can make any difference. So built up too much in the middle. And I think we have an even stroke here, which is good. So now I'm going to go to the specular map, making sure we have the right texture selected again. And we're just going to paint that on completely. Make sure we have brush selected and making the strength quite high and we're just going to colour that all the way in make that nice and shiny so let's rotate this around so we can have a look at the texturing and it's looking pretty good it is very shiny at the moment but these are settings we can uh, adjust in Keyshot but for the moment that's what it looks like pretty bland without the specular map with it turned back on it's quite shiny 
looking at the full cube, we can now, with our textures done, we can now go to export. So in order to export the selection, what we need to do is select the cube itself. That's in the object list. Select the cube, it highlights, and then we can go through and export selection. And we're calling this object cube, and make sure it's an OPJ file. And we're going to save. And now we'll export all paint layers. Now you just got to make sure the paint layers at the bottom, color, spec, and bump that we've named, are ticked. So this is exporting. Don't worry about the merge channel there or the naming of those layers. It's all automatic. We just have to change the path. This is where we want to save our textures. Now it is best to save these where you've saved the OBJ file. So I've already saved previously. So I'm going to choose this. And when we're ready, all our settings are ready to go. Uh, we will export the files and textures. And when it's done, it's going to pop up with a little text box saying successfully exported three paint layers. And we can move on to the next step.